It's four weeks until the beginning of Advent. First of December is the first Sunday of Advent. So you know what that means, don't you? It's only eight weeks until Christmas. Yay! Everyone happy about that? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not if you're a parent and you're saving up for presents. Um, but I thought, I thought, you know what will be good? You know, like, um, now normally, like, well, this is what happens to me. So Christmas comes, I don't do anything about my weight, and then I gain about 14 stone over Christmas. Yeah? And then I'm worried about my weight for the rest of the year. So I thought this year, what I would do is I'd lose weight before Christmas. See? And then when I get to Christmas, I should just be fat again and not huge, right? So good idea, good plan, yeah? So eight weeks should be enough. Because like when you're exercising, you know you say, I'm gonna exercise and you know, get in shape and that kind of stuff. And then after one month, you say to yourself, well, nothing's changed. And then you give up, right? But that's when you have to press on. Because it's in the second and the third, you know, all the other months afterwards, you see transformation. So I thought, well, maybe that applies to our spiritual preparations too, right? You know, sometimes one month in a year just isn't enough to prepare spiritually for Christmas. Everyone's preparing for secular Christmas for six months, so why don't we take two months instead of one to get ready? Sound like a good plan? Okay, so here's, here's my roadmap. Here's my spiritual exercise plan for us over these ne next eight weekends. Okay, here we go. So, uh, so this weekend and next weekend, we're going to focus on correct form. Okay, so if you're going to a gym, yeah, and you're just starting out, now people go to a gym and they're like, I just lift every weight and then run on the treadmill, and then they wonder why they're in agonizing pain the next day. It's because if you don't have the right technique or the right form, if you don't know how to position yourselves, then actually the exercise is doing you harm. So as we begin our spiritual preparations, we're going to focus this week and next week on our form how we position ourselves before God as we prepare to enter in our journey towards him. Does that make sense? Okay. So the following two weeks, so the 9th, 10th of November, 16th and 17th, we're going to do preparation exercises. So after we've got our form, we're going to start you know, ramping up the intensity just a little bit. Because it's that time of year, as the, the liturgical year ends and Advent begins, that we start focusing on the end times. So, we're going to focus on the end for us. What is the end and the purpose of our life? So we're going to go into that. So after getting our form right, getting our preparation, then we end into, into Advent, the period of high intensity spiritual exercise. So we're going to do something different in Advent though. I'm going to let you vote and choose what I preach about. Okay? I had this idea yesterday. I thought, it's such a good idea. Isn't it a good idea? <laughs> We'll see. Okay, so the idea is that um, through the Instagram account that we have, through the Facebook, where, you know, all the social media we have, or you can write on a piece of paper in an envelope, send in to me whatever you think you'd like to hear teaching on or, or preaching on. Because often people say, Father, I wish you'd talk about this. Or what about this problem? Or what about this issue? Well, here is me responding. It's your turn to say to me, okay, we'd like to hear teaching on this. And I'm going to place this all within the context of our vision of the parish. Sound like a good deal? So that's our program. Anyway, I have a qu back to this week. I've got a question. Who likes hummus? Fans? Hummus fans? Yeah? Not, not that many, actually. Okay. But Chris is, Chris is going for two people there. Okay. Well, the six, the six o'clock crowd last night, everyone liked hummus. So maybe they're all eating hummus now while we're here. Okay. So you might be thinking, well, why is James talking about hummus? At Mass. Why is he always thinking about food? Well, because I'm always thinking about food. Um, actually, it came from the first reading. Hummus came to me from God in the first reading when I was preparing this homily this week. And it was this line. First line. The humble man's prayer pierces the clouds. That's from the reading we've just heard. The humble man's prayer pierces the clouds. And I thought to myself, I was curious, I thought, I wonder what the word humble I wonder where it comes from. You know when you think, that's an interesting word. So I wonder where it comes from. So I got my dictionaries out. And I found the Latin root of the word humble, where we get the word humble from, humilis. And it was this. Hummus. That's the Latin that the word humble comes from. So as soon as I saw that, I thought, I'm feeling hungry. And I got distracted. 
So anyway, but I stuck at it. I had some hummus and then I came back. And, um, and so then I found this out, that the root of, what's this? Hummus chips. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. But that, that was planned. <laughs> so hummus means in Latin ground or earth. Yeah? So a humble person is someone who is lowly, someone who is close to the ground. And a humble person is, in God's eyes, a holy person, someone who is close to the ground. And we might be thinking, but that's strange. I thought holy people were those who were close to heaven. Aren't holy people the ones we hold up, who are closest to God? So how can someone who is close to the earth, to the things of the earth, be holy? Well, it's because that's the way God sees holiness. And that's the way he patterns holiness and humility for us. And if we don't believe it, let's listen to St. Paul's words. Though he was in the form of God, Jesus did not think equality with God a thing to be grasped. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. And so God, God the Father, sent his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, into the world to take on our life, our flesh, and our humanity. He didn't remain in heaven and dictate it from above. He took it on. He became humble. He became a person of the ground, like we are. And he went even further. He went underground to show that the exalted life the life of the humble person is the one that God treads himself. So when God talks of humility, he talks of a right relationship with himself. Now, in the gospel today, we see that pattern played out for real. And Jesus holds up two men as contrasting examples of holiness. So you have the Pharisee. And this is how Jesus describes how he began his prayer. The Pharisee stood there and said this prayer to himself and the prayer continues like this the Pharisee says I thank you God for not making me like him so if he's praying to himself and then he says I thank you God who is he speaking about himself when we place ourselves above others when we think of ourselves as better than others around us we put ourselves in the position of the judge. We raise ourselves up high. And in the first reading today, we heard what God thinks of that. He says, the Lord is a judge. We are men and women of the earth. At Ash Wednesday, we have a sign of the cross on our foreheads, don't we? And we hear those words, remember that you are dust, and dust you shall return. Now, contrast that with the tax collector. And what does he say? God, be merciful to me, a sinner. But then, just before that, he says something interesting. He says, the tax collector stood before the temple and beat his breast, not daring to raise his eyes to heaven. And so if his eyes aren't up there, where are they? They're down there. He is remembering who he is before God. He is remembering his correct form. Remember we talk about form? How we set up for real spiritual exercise? It's about remembering who you are, what you are, and why you are. It is only the humble person who can receive the merciful judgment of God. Because before God, we are sinners. We're imperfect. We're not complete. And we look to God as our goal, as our prize, as our merciful judge, who will exalt us through the pattern of life that he himself adopted. Because this is what we hear. You know that saying I just had from Paul? This is how it finished. He became obedient unto death, even to death upon a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. And so as God adopts our pattern of life, as he becomes a man of the earth, a man of flesh, and then walks this path of humility... He shows us that the correct form, the correct way to address God, to live in right relationship with him, is to remember who we are. 
And in remembering who we are, remembering how much we are loved as we are. And in remembering our humanity, in our merciful judgment of our brothers and sisters, God is to exalt us. For a Christian, for a follower of God, for a truly humble person, there can be no judgment of others. There can be no seeking of praise for the good that you do. This is the ordinary pattern for the life of a Christian. And so, as we begin these eight weeks of spiritual preparation, perhaps this week in particular, let's set ourselves straight. Let's set ourselves on the ground. Eyes to the ground, remembering that this flesh we inhabit, this sinful humanity, is also a glorified humanity if we walk the same path of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And if we remember in all deeds and in all thoughts to say in our prayers, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Amen.